Alright, so in pre-calculus we really want to focus on you guys being able to solve every type of equation that's possible to work with, okay, in math. You know, solving linear equations, quadratic equations, polynomial equations, um, trig equations, we've done that already this year. You've done radical equations in the past, okay, you've done those in Algebra 2. Uh, we're going to do similar ones plus ones that are a little bit more in-depth, a um, little bit more difficult process is very much the same. When you think of radicals in math, what do you think of? Square roots. Square roots. Cube roots, fourth roots, fifth roots, and so on. Right? Okay. A couple other reminders on this. A little extra review. Do you guys know that the square root of x is the same thing as x to what power? Mm -hmm. Nope. One over two. One over two. Okay. The square root of something is that something raised to the one-half power. The cube root, one-third power, the fourth root, the one-fourth power, and so on, okay? They're rational exponents, fractional exponents, okay? Do you guys recall that a little bit? Okay. If you saw this, the fifth root of x to the third, you could write it as x raised to what power? Three over five, three-fifths. They're the exact same thing. This is just a little bit of, uh, again, some algebra review for you with radicals and rational exponents. What's the opposite operation of a square root? Square. Squaring something. What's the opposite operation of a fifth root? Multiply by five. Power. Raise it to the fifth power. Okay. The opposite of a square root would be raising it to the squared, you know, the second power. The opposite of a fifth root, fifth root would be raising it to the fifth power, and so on. They they undo one another. Okay. So you'll be working a lot with these. They might be as simple as this. Um, let's go. Cube root of x plus five. Equals, oh, that's be really simple. Um, negative two. Okay. How would you solve this equation for x? Mm -hmm. Cube what? Both sides. Cube both sides of the equal sign. Okay. That's very important that to say that part. Um, not as much on this one, but when you when you do when you want to cube something, you have to cube the entire side, which works out nicely here, because the only thing on the left side of the equal sign is a cube root. So when you raise that to the third power, all that does is get rid of the cube root. You're left with x plus 5. Make sure you do it to the other side, and you get negative 8. Subtract 5 from both sides, and you get x equals negative 13. Okay. Very basic, very simple. Plug your answer back in. Negative 13 plus 5 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Okay? Um, Let's try this one here. The square root of x minus 3 equals the square root of 3x minus 11. Square both sides. Square both sides. Why? Get rid of both of them. Yep. It'll undo both square roots. And now you just simply have a what? Yeah, nice little linear equation. x minus 3 equals 3x minus 11. Subtract x gives you 2x, add 11 gives you 8, so x equals 4. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Um, I 
x plus 4 to the 2 thirds power equals 16. Two ways to really work with this one. Ideas that you guys have. Change it to radical to make it look like the ones we just got done doing. That would be one way to do it. I'll do it that way and then I'll go do it another way too. Okay. Change it to radical, what would it look like? Cube root of x plus four squared. X plus four squared equals sixteen. So if you do that, then what are you gonna do to both sides next? Cube it. Cube it. Raise it to the third power, right? Okay. I'm gonna need some help there. I can do sixteen times sixteen, but I can't do sixteen times itself three times. 4,096, okay? So I have x plus 4 squared equals 4,096. Square. Square root both sides. Does that come out nice? of an equal sign um, in an equation. It could be a positive or it could be a negative. I'll give you another example. You know, just think about this. If I have x squared equals 49, mm -hmm. there's two answers there, right? 7 or negative 7. Okay, so whenever you square root both sides, whenever you even root, so square root, fourth root, sixth root, eighth root, whenever you even root both sides of an equal sign, be sure to put plus minus. Okay. And then if you subtract 4 from both of those, what are our two answers? If I subtract 4 from 64, I get 60. If I subtract 4 from negative 64, I get negative 68. I didn't show my work there, but I spoke my work out loud. Okay. I just subtracted 4 from the positive 64, and I subtracted 4 from the negative 64 to get my two answers. Oh, yes? Question, you know where we square root that x plus 4 squared? Yes. Would we be able to not square root it and just like do x to like x squared plus uh, 16? Boil it out, x plus 4. Well, it would be x squared plus 16. It'd be x plus oh, 4, x yeah. plus 4, so that'd be x squared plus 8x plus 16 okay. equals 4,096. Then you could subtract 4,096 from both sides and then factor it. Uh -huh. But your two values are going to be really big numbers, and I doubt you know what 60 and 68 multiply to right off the top of your head. Okay. But so it could be done that way. It could, yeah, you just don't want to. But if I have a quantity squared equals a number to me, I would just square root both sides to get rid of that squared. Okay. Just don't forget your plus or minus. Okay? All right, I said I was going to show you a second way, right? So I have x plus 4 to the 2 thirds power equals 16. I'm going to raise both sides of the equal sign to a power. And by doing that, all I'm going to be left with is x plus 4. What power do I need to raise both sides of the equal sign to? 3 over 2? Yes, no? Yes. Why? When you raise a power to a power, what do you do with those powers? Like if I have x squared raised to the third power, what does that become? x to the sixth. What do you do with those powers? You multiply them. So why would raising this to the 3 halves power be a good thing? 
one. Two thirds times three halves is the number one. So you have x plus four to the one power, or really just x plus four. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I'm going to do right here. And I'm going to raise both sides to the three halves power. Now the only problem with doing this is a lot of people tend to forget the plus or minus by doing it this way. Because if you go type into your calculator 16 to the 3 halves power, it's only going to give you the positive number. Okay? So how do you know there's going to be a plus or minus? All right? Well, when you raise something to the 3 halves power, what type of root are you doing? A square root. You can tell that by the denominator, right? If that denominator is even, you're doing an even root to both sides of the equal sign. If you do an even root to both sides of the equal sign, you need plus or minus. Okay? Now, if I raise both sides of the equal sign to the four-thirds power, you can just take whatever your calculator gives you, and that's the answer. You don't need plus or minus, because a cube root, there's only one answer. Okay? Yes, no, I get it, don't get it, show me an example, talk to me. Okay? So it's all based on that denominator's power. If that's an even denominator, you're doing an even root, therefore it's plus or minus. So you'll get x plus 4 equals plus or minus 64, just like that. One step into the problem, you're already there. I like it because it's faster. I don't like it because a lot of times people tend to forget the plus or minus part when they do even roots. Subtract 4 from both sides and you'll get your same two answers we had on the last one, a positive 60 and a negative 68. Any questions on that? Okay. One last one for solving radicals. This is about as tough as they'll get. Both sides? Yeah, like You can't square terms individually. You have to square the entire side. So if you square the entire side, you're going to have to take that quantity times itself. Which is okay, but it gets a little bit ugly when you have two square roots on the same side of the equal sign. Not that this problem is going to be nice either way. But as a, you could do this right away. <clears throat> I would probably move one of the radicals to the other side and then square both sides. It's still not real nice, but it's better than doing, doing that. Okay? So I got the square root of x plus 2 equals 3 minus the square root of x minus 1. I subtracted the square root of x minus 1 from both sides. Then I'd square both sides. Left side simple, it just becomes what? X plus 2. The right side is going to take a FOIL or a distributive property. I have to take that entire side times itself. So, what do I got? 9. 3 times a negative square root of x minus 1 is simply minus 3 square roots of x minus 1 minus another 3 square roots of x minus 1 plus 
x minus 1. Because the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x minus 1 is simply x minus 1. Combine all of our like terms. So x plus 2 equals, I got a 9, take away a 1, so I got an 8. Uh, minus 3 square roots of these things, minus another 3 square roots of those things, makes minus 6 square roots of those things. And then plus x. Oh, that's in bad. Now what do you think? Subtract. X from both sides, why is that nice? It's real. They're gone. So if I subtract X from both sides, now I have 2 equals 8 minus 6 square roots of X minus 1. Not all of them are the X's going to disappear, so I guess they could get a little bit more complicated than this one. Subtract the 8. So negative 6 equals negative 6 square roots of X minus 1. Divide by negative 6, so I get 1 equals the square root of x minus 1. If I divide both sides by negative 6, square, square both sides, and I get 1 equals x minus 1. Add 1 to both sides, and you get x equals 2. Not all of them come out quite as nice as that one did. Uh, on this one, the x's, when we subtracted x from both sides, the x's were gone. Unfortunately, on some of them, it doesn't always disappear. So when you go to square both sides of the equal sign again to get rid of the square root, you might have a quantity over here. You might have x plus 3. So you got a FOIL, x plus 3 times x plus 3. And you'll end up with a quadratic equation, and you will have two answers then. Okay? So they could potentially have, have two solutions. I'm sure at some point I might have to do one of those for you there. Okay? So that is solving radical equations. Um, I believe the practice for radicals are on page 247. No, that's rational. Um, 255. I haven't switched up. So page 255. 12 through 17. 27. Do as they need. So they get a little bit easier. Uh, for some reason, I'm saying skip number 16. Let me look at why I said that fast. I don't know. Hmm. I don't see why. I mean, it's not that weird one. I don't know why I did it. Um, and then... There's six tough ones on this. Actually, we did the first one um, on this worksheet. But there's six kind of tough ones that will be very similar to that last one that I just did up here. Okay. So there's six problems. They're the tough ones. On the worksheet. Okay. So that's radicals. That's solving radicals. 